whenever a composer writes a work that has more than one section or more than one movement, there has to be a there has to be a sense to it. I often think of um, of compositions as books, stories, experiences, and in the end, what we're actually doing is we're um, creating something for someone else to experience. I have this experience where I hear people's vibrations. I will hear vibrations from, from anything that really exists when you hear vibration as tone, it's actually the material of music. You look at a beautiful chair, and you could actually hear that chair vibrate. If you look at a person, you're looking at a musical work. When I was starting to write my piano concerto, I had heard the theme of the first movement very clearly. And it was a beautiful singing um, orchestral theme. So the first movement had to do with this experience of how the universe just breathes, how it's alive, and how we're not the only ones in it. In 1987, after one of my concerts at Lincoln Center, a gentleman named Gordon Osmond approached me with an offer to write a piano concerto for the Jackson, Michigan Symphony. I was given only three months to write, orchestrate, have copied, learn, rehearse, and perform the premiere. Even though the audience and critics loved it at the time, I was not happy with the result. I realized later that it was because there were many mistakes in the parts because of the rush to get it done in time. I was a naive young composer and I didn't realize how much was involved to get a piece of this magnitude ready for performance. So when the whole experience was over, I took the score and put it in my file cabinet and it sat there for 22 years. Well, at the time uh, that I wrote the piano concerto, I had just really begun to compose a great deal. And I had written my piano sonata and uh, I had written The Challenger. Say it with music, beautiful music. So go the Irving Berlin lyrics. But some things one would think are very hard to say with beautiful music. On January 28, 1986, seven men and women prepared to reach for the stars. It was the last time we saw them. Robert Di Gaetano is a concert pianist and a composer. And so this mission became very important for me. In what way can I inspire people the way this mission has inspired people? What he did was to meditate for months about the astronauts, and then he put down on paper the score for a piece about them. Last week at Lincoln Center in New York, the world premiere took place for Robert Di Gaetano's composition called the challenge. In 2008, the head of the foundation was present at one of my private recitals. She said they would be interested in promoting my music and asked what I thought would be the next step in the process. I knew it was to record the piano concerto that had been put away for so many years. The concerto was taken out of the filing cabinet and I worked on it for over a year, correcting original mistakes in the score, rewriting some of the orchestration, and writing a totally new piano cadenza that I felt balanced better with the overall piece. This was my second chance to get it right and I was giving everything I had to make that happen. Now we're going to record the piece in the Czech Republic with the Moravian Philharmonic Orchestra, which is one of the best in the world.
My family are the people that supported me from the beginning as a musician, as a pianist, and as a composer. My parents particularly were very supportive in, uh, in helping me fulfill my dreams. My maternal grandmother uh, gave me my first piano lesson. My parents were both born in New York City, but of Italian heritage. All my grandparents were born in Italy. So there's a tradition musically that comes from the family. Recently, I lost my brother, uh, who's a great artist, a great painter and a sculptor. You don't really lose anybody in life. It's a transformation, and if you're willing to embody who they are, they're with you all the time. When I first wrote the piano concerto, I dedicated the concerto to my parents. Now I'm gonna dedicate this recording to my brother's memory. I've never done a recording like this before. Usually I do recordings where we have very long takes. I mean, there's, there's so many people involved and so much involved, especially when you're doing a concerto. I mean, first of all, you have an entire orchestra. You have managers, you have uh, concert masters, you have conductors. Then you have the entire recording team. I mean, engineers, producers. The producer has to hear every single thing that's in that score and make sure that the instrumentalists do what is in that score. That's his job. The production process of creating something as complex as classical music is just a, almost an overwhelming one to conceive of for a lot of people. Generally speaking, we record anywhere between two and 20 measures in, in any given take, sometimes longer, and sometimes you stop them right after the first beat. Stop. Good. All right. Uh, Let's proceed, One, 155, please. And the process of production is about saying, how do we take that musical passion, this, this energy, this vibe, this emotional quality and, and content, and make it into something that is gonna have longevity and will be lasting. Hello, hello. Uh, can we start? John, you there? Yeah, just a moment. Sure. This is what makes the thing alive. It's the, it's the uncertainty, it's the fallibility, and the idea that stuff is going to happen. And sometimes the stuff that happens makes it interesting and, and human. The second movement is this playful movement, which uh, I was trying to bring the experience of my uh, childhood to by growing up in New York City in the Bronx and hearing things like the garbage cans being thrown and uh, a lot of the percussion that we heard as children. I was born here in New York City and I've had the influences of the city since as early as I could remember. When I was very young we lived in a project in the Bronx and in that project, there were all kinds of people from all over the world. I've learned many different uh, kinds of sounds and languages from immigrants. New York City has these incredible buildings that have sharp angles and the light that reflects off these angles. New York's light is very dynamic. I always compare it to uh, the key of C major because C major is a, it's a very in-your-face key. So the city has been a very integral part of my life, but all of that influences how I write my music. When I first wrote the third movement 22 years ago, I had my share of early relationship issues. Now when I return to this music, I realize how profound it is to love and to care. It seems to be more important at this time in my life than anything else could possibly be. The third movement uh, of my piano concerto is a very personal uh, reflection of my own quest for uh, relationship, to understand relationship and to understand our connection to life, to religion, 
to, to love and our striving to understand the divine. When I started writing the fourth movement, I heard these dances, but they were strange. They had a kind of a, an awkward rhythm to it. When I was a child, it was very common to go to weddings, bar mitzvahs, and parties, all of which people celebrated by dancing. The Tarantella, Hava Megillah, and many other dances influenced my writing of the fourth movement. My dance has a strange rhythm that I realized had to do with the possibility that people with more than two legs were dancing. This, of course, could be that other beings in the universe came here to dance that don't look exactly like us. In this music, there's a passionism that goes on in layers, and many, many different layers simultaneously. So I realized that that's the kind of music that I write after I wrote this piano concerto, that that's what I want to express. I want to express all these different things that go on in the universe. I think my brother, without question, would not have wanted me to cancel this project. I always, one day, wanted to be able to bring the piano concerto to life and record it the way I thought it should be recorded, the way I thought it should be heard. Even though I wrote it a long time ago, it's only been the last two years since I've uh, had the opportunity to uh, bring the piano concerto to life again. It's remarkable. It's a gift from heaven. <laughs>